Curious about the math that goes into buying a home? You may know what your dream home costs, but do you know if you'd even qualify for the loan? Today we're going to be going behind the scenes to explain what key factors go into qualifying an individual for a loan so when you go through the process you have a better understanding. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Evan, a real estate agent and mortgage broker. Before I start, I wanted to mention that this video is a continuation of one that I already made called The Cost of Buying a Home. Now I had a request from a subscriber to explain how I came up with all these numbers that I did and how they can actually qualify for the loans that I mentioned in the video. Now you should be able to understand this video as a standalone, but it could be worth your time to watch that video and then continue with this one. So as the title mentions, let's say you've been in the workforce for a while now, uh, you're earning good money, uh, you've been saving a lot of money, and you think now is the time to purchase a home. So you start doing the research, you start crunching the numbers, and then you get to the point where you realize, how much home can I actually afford? Now this is a good question to consider, and it's one that I'm gonna be answering today. So in my previous video, I mentioned that all homes that were showcased follow a set of guidelines. They were that the homes were bought with a conventional loan with 20% down, uh, with interest rates from September of 2023, and with a credit score of 760. Now this is not important now, but it will be touched upon later in the video. To start, in order to get a better understanding of how much home you can actually afford, I strongly consider you speaking to a local bank representative or a mortgage loan originator. Uh, to get a better understanding of the mortgage process now, I have a video on my channel called Making Sense of Mortgages. You can check it out and I'll be linking it in the description down below. Anyway, with the information that you provide, either the documents or the numbers off the top of your head, the bank representative or mortgage loan originator should give you a rough idea of how much home you can afford. Now, what you can afford is based off of a lot of things, but it starts with your income. So as a mortgage loan originator, it's my job to determine how much you make in monthly income, either you as an individual or if someone else is joining you on the loan, like a spouse or a partner. So your salary, your bonuses, commissions, and any other sources of regular income. Then we determine your assets. So your bank accounts, investment accounts, retirement accounts, real estate, vehicles, and more. And then lastly, we determine all of your pre-existing liabilities. So your car payments, student debt payments, monthly credit card payments, and any other monthly payments that you make. Once we have your income, assets, and liabilities, we can now determine what your debt to income ratio is. A front end debt to income ratio calculates your income versus your housing expenses. So you take your housing expenses, divide that by your gross monthly income, and times that by 100. That is your front end debt to income ratio. A back end debt to income ratio calculates your income versus your housing expenses and any other financial obligations you have per month. So you take your housing expenses plus any other monthly debt payments, divide that by your gross monthly income and times that by 100. That is your back end debt to income ratio. Now each type of loan sets an acceptable front end and back end debt to income ratio. With conventional loans, it's typically 28 for the front end, and 36 for the back end. For FHA loans, it's typically 31 for the front end and 43% for the back end. For VA loans, there is no set limits, but 41 is recommended for the back end. For USDA loans, typically 29% for the front end and for the back end, 41%. If you're not within the recommended range, you should aim to lower your debt to income ratio. So consider seeking out additional income, getting a cosigner, paying off some of your debt, refinancing existing loans, looking into loan forgiveness, or paying off high interest loans. Your credit score plays a significant role in the loan approval process. The higher your score is, the more trustworthy you seem to the bank, thus lowering your overall costs. Your score can influence if you are approved for a loan and also the max loan you can qualify for. During this process, your mortgage loan originator will take into consideration current interest rates and your credit score. They will also tweak the home price and total down payment to see how much home you can actually afford. Interest rates also play a significant role. Now your credit score impacts your interest rate, but so does the economy, inflation, and many other things. So now that we've covered your income, assets, liabilities, credit score, and interest rates, we can now cover your monthly mortgage payments. I want you to meet Bob. Bob wants to buy one Ogden Road, which is listed for $499,900. He's considering a 20% down payment, which would be $99,980, leaving him a loan of $399,920. Using the same interest rates from the previous video, so from September of 2023, 
The best interest rate Bob could get on a conventional loan with no points paid would be 6.375%. Also taking into consideration Bob's 760 credit score, he would have a monthly mortgage payment of $2,494.98, including principal and interest. Since Bob plans to pay 20%, he would not have to pay PMI, private mortgage insurance, which covers mortgage lenders in the event of a borrower defaults on a loan. Once you hit 20% equity, your PMI goes away. State property taxes for the home are $18,930 a year, so monthly costs would be $1,577.50. Homeowner insurance, which covers losses and damages to the property, is about $120 a month. So all of these add up to $4,192.48 in monthly payments for Bob's potential new home. Now we need to see if Bob can actually afford the home. Bob is a medical robot technician and earns $110,000 base salary a year. Marlene, his wife, is a registered nurse and earns $86,000 base salary a year. They both have no student debt or car loans, and they have about $975 in monthly credit card payments. They also have over $140,000 in the bank saved up after following a strict budget for years. With all of this information, we see that Bob and Marlene's front end ratio is 25.668% and back end ratio is 31.63%, which means both are lower than the 28 and 36% necessary for a conventional loan. That means Bob and Marlene should comfortably qualify for their home loan should nothing change between now and when they sign the contract. Now, closing costs for one Ogden Road would amount to $123,410.95. I came to this number because I used a 20% down payment, which was $99,980. I also accounted for prepaids, which are costs you pay for before they are technically due. These consist of mortgage interest, county property tax reserves, hazard insurance premium, and hazard insurance reserves. These are paid into an escrow account to ensure that you have money to pay your upcoming bills when they are due. This amount came out to $12,312.75. The remaining $11,118.20 consisted of appraisal fees, credit reports, title insurance, New York State mortgage tax, recording charges, and more. As I mentioned earlier, Bob and Marlene have over $140,000 in the bank, which means that they have more than enough to cover these closing costs. Now no, closing costs can change based off of numerous factors. The closing costs that I just talked about are for one Ogden Road specifically. You should not use them as an example for other properties at different price points, in different states, and at different points in time. So yeah, hopefully that answered all of your questions on how I got the numbers that I did and how mortgage loan originators qualify people for loans. I'm happy to do video requests. All I ask is that you put them in the description down below. And until then, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.